All right. Everybody still hearing me okay? Yes. Yes. We're good. Yep. All right. Excellent. Um, so thanks, everybody, for joining. Um, we should have the agenda of the meeting um, in the Google Docs app. So um, let's get started. So first order of business uh, this last uh, couple weeks. Um, the first thing I wanted to report that I'm really excited about is that we should all uh, congratulate ourselves and feel really good about the fact that um, we got a organic posting about the project on Hacker News um, this last week, four days ago. Um, I don't think anybody from this project posted it, unless one of you did. Uh, I don't think any of you is Mike E-S-S-P-E. Um, e -S -S -E. So I don't know who Mike E-S-S-P-E is, but I didn't pay him to post it on Hacker News. I don't I don't. I, I, I didn't have any direct influence over it. Um, Could you so send anyway, the link? It's on the chat. I haven't the link is in the agenda. Oh, OK. Yeah. So um, check it out. Actually, I'll uh, let me share my screen here. Uh, so right. Um, and a lot of really nice comments. Um, so I can tell you as well that um, that uh, in terms of the analytics, uh, this also resulted in the largest single day of traffic uh, to the OpenWorm uh, site in its entire history, um, which is also really exciting. So um, again, you guys should feel good and congratulate yourselves about the work that you put in because uh, folks are noticing and um, it's being noticed as a fairly legitimate project. Um, so in addition, I mean, this is not the first time that uh, anybody's written about us, but um, that is kind of exciting. Uh, so, so um, uh, this happened on Friday, and I've been sort of looking at this, and it's it's uh, been a good swift kick in the pants to get some things done that haven't been done in a while, um, and um, so that's what some of the rest of these uh, agenda items are about. Uh, so uh, promptly upon upon seeing this, I, I I realized that a few things hadn't been updated. Uh, the roadmap, in particular, uh, was still old. So I went in and took the stories uh, from the roadmap of um, uh, that we that we produced in inside ScrumDo, and uh, posted them and put them out, and um, um, annotated them. I moved the old release to an old to an old release page, um, and I um, um, I also posted the uh, update that I made at the NeuroML meeting in, in Edinburgh, just so others uh, if curious can see that. Um, and so I think it's just good to kind of like go back and think about the big picture again um, and the different things that we're doing with regards to these different releases. Um, hey, Andrew. Uh, I think there's some background noise. Uh, background noise coming through. Would you mind uh, hitting the mute? Yeah. Okay. I don't know if your microphone is a little low. It's connecting from the space station. Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay. There we go. Good. So yeah, so Andrew, I was just saying we should feel good. We got we got posted up on Hacker News. Um, that's the first item there on the agenda. Be sure to check that out. Um, so I updated the roadmap, uh, sort of restating the big picture for, for these three months. This is what we came up with. Uh, remind everybody that this is not set in absolute stone. Uh, this is just kind of what we have agreed on so far. And in fact, uh, you know, I've been having a couple conversations about thinking about this scope uh, a little bit more deeply. Um, and uh, and it's it's obvious that we've sort of self uh, self organized around some of these epics more than others, um, and that's okay. Um, these were just sort of ways for us to describe what we're doing. But um, anyway, so it'd be good for you to take some time and look over these again and see if they're sort of well described. I don't want to do it immediately right now. I want to get through my updates, but but let's uh, let's revisit it towards the end. Okay, but that so that's new. Um, then. Um, so it also prompted um, me to go back to the Google Shared folder, and uh, so you're all shared on it. Uh, what the what the public sees when they go to it is this new Google Drive interface, which has slots for descriptions for the different folders. So I took it upon myself to actually organize these a little bit better, put some of the folders underneath other folders, and actually make some descriptions. So that's there now, um, nice. and um, and you click in a bit. Um, you'll also see some more of that. So hopefully this should be more useful for everybody. 
Um, uh, I added some readmes to some of the projects that were missing them in, in GitHub. Um, so that's another thing, I, I think, for folks coming from the outside trying to understand what's going on. Um, I don't think that this is the most complete uh, set of readmes that are possible, but just at least to kind of connect some of these projects together. So those all got kind of a makeover. Um, and then, let's see, pointed the source code page to GitHub, right. So the, yeah, the old source code page was still pointing at Google Code, um, so I moved that over. I asked Alex to transition the uh, last source repository that was in uh, Google Code over to GitHub, and he did that. So um, we're now fully 100% on GitHub, which is, I think, turning out really great because it's an awesome uh, place to host code. Okay, then uh, the open war mailing list. So we're all signed up to it. Um, and a long time ago, as, uh, as Giovanni reminded me, I, I thought that maybe we shouldn't be using it as much um, because of the, the composition of folks that are on there. Uh, now I think um, we actually have a lot of people that are on that list, if you take the time uh, to kind of check it out, I think it's, I think the membership is, is public. Anyway, there's a lot of people now that are on there who are sort of curious onlookers um, <coughs> trying to understand more about what's going on. And um, up until now, we haven't had, we haven't used this as much of a forum for technical discussions. Um, I think it's good we do. Uh, so I took it upon myself to start some. Um, hopefully that, hopefully that those messages all reached you over the last week. Um, and I think that it's important now more than it was before because we, we actually have some real code. People can build it. There's now been several folks who have been trying to build the code and, and several that have been successful internal to the project. And so, um, I mean, you can read those threads for, for what I'm doing there, but um, I think it's, it's much more doable now. So all this with an eye towards, you know, 5,000 page views on a single day. Um, we should, it should be clearer what the project is doing. It should be clearer uh, how to get a hold of pieces of the project and play with it. Uh, because all those things uh, mean that we could you know, bring even more people to the party. Um, and um, I think that um, it looks like folks um, are interested in potentially being part of the party in an increasing way. Um, okay, and then the last thing, um, just on this uh, rant of updates. So everybody here should have received an invite to something called Hojoki, H-O-J-O-K-I. Um, this is, uh, so we, we obviously use a lot of different services in this project, and I know that it, they can start to get confusing, and so you might, those of you who haven't had a look at it might say, oh no, Stephen, not another service. Uh, we have too many of them already. The purpose of this is, however, to actually simplify that, because what Hajoki does is it provides a single activity stream over all of the different services, well, I, I don't think 100% of them are yet represented, but a big, a big chunk of them. So when you check out this stream, uh, and uh, you can just go through and accept that invite, you'll see that um, when things get updated in Dropbox, there will be a, um, a message. If things get updated in the calendar, there will be a message. If things get updated on Twitter, uh, you'll see that show up there. Um, if they get updated on GitHub, any of the GitHub repositories, We'll have an update there. Um, what am I leaving out? Um, I just hooked up Mendeley yesterday. So when we add a new paper to our Mendeley group, that'll show up. And Google Docs, any of the Google Docs uh, that we edit um, will show up there as well um, in a single stream. So <coughs> the idea is that no one has to do that manually. No one has to report like they, like they did in, in Teambox before that they made a change or something. Uh, it, this, this thing is listening to the feeds of all of these different projects and just, uh, you know, creating an alert for us. And then we, you can also chat and reply to that, to that individual event as well. So um, check it out. Um, see if you like it. Um, if it's useful, obviously, um, feel free to use it as much as you like. If not, um, feel free to not use it. But it's an attempt to kind of bring some more um, sense to this, this whole madness. Okay, so uh, any questions on any of that good stuff and before we go to um, uh, talking about what's been happening in your world? Yeah, Stephen, I have uh, one question. Yes. Uh, it's like the, the blowing up on hacker news 
was good. The the one thing I noticed though is that uh, it is true we had a peak of 5,000 visitors to the Google Code website, but right. only 149 actually reached our official website, which I think is where we want people to be. As in, the, a lot of those 5,000 people went to the Google site, uh, for the Google Code site, I'm sure, and they said, oh, what is this? And it was not uh, engaging uh, visually, and they might have just left and said, oh, another open source project I have no time to invest on. While if there was a very easy way to go from the Google Code website to to the open one website, then uh, I think we would have converted much more of those 5,000 visitors that went there from Hacker News. So, yes. Maybe That's a good point. I uh, a couple things. A couple things just to respond. So, one, um, uh, you'll notice I made a few changes actually to the site. So, in particular, I want to draw your attention to the fact that I now link the site in the upper, you know, right here, basically. Um, in a very large uh, link in an attempt to drive people because I, I had that same concern. Um, so this used to be, I think Roadmap was here and I sort of moved it over and I got rid of Rationale. Um, and this is usually a place that people will hopefully click on a lot. Um, doesn't necessarily solve the problem 100%, but that's one. Another is that on the footer of all the pages, I went ahead and also linked the Open Worm Getting Started page in the contact page. Um, so that there's more of a flow back to that as a, um, as a starting point for several things. Um, so those are two things I did. I'm uh, totally open to any additional suggestions for um, what to do. Obviously, we didn't, we weren't the ones posting that uh, that link, so we didn't control which. Oh yeah, I, I, I know, I know, I know, I know. The, maybe one thing uh, that that is already a, a good improvement. Maybe an extra thing I would do would be just to give a particular because like the is. This website it is at the same level as roadmap uh, and uh, resources. Well, maybe I would put some graphics right on top of the website with the Open Worm logo in big and say, visit our website in big, so that it's like if somebody goes to the Google Code and has no specific reason to be on the Google Code, it will just immediately click there and go and visit the official website. So, but I, I can take the lead and do yeah. that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Graphic would be great. Yeah. So um, everybody should be shared to do administration on the site. So feel free to go for it. Yeah, that would be awesome, actually. A banner or something with like a bunch of people. Like, like a bunch of people there. Yeah. Cool. Other questions about stuff? Okay. Awesome. Uh, so let's see here. Um, so the topics for discussion, uh, just basically run down some of the things we had before. So uh, let's start off. So muscle cell data meeting. Um, so Alex and I had a meeting this last, uh, this last sprint just to talk a little bit about getting back into some of this um, muscle cell data. I saw, thank you, Mike. I saw your, your note for setting up a time. Uh, it's hard of the work, but um, I think and Alex need to get together post haste here on this, so I'm hoping we can schedule for the weekend to go over that data. That data is still sort of sitting there. We did get some updates on what those experimental conditions were for that muscle cell data. Um, they look a little sparse, but hopefully uh, it's a good start. So um, basically we don't have anything to report until we schedule that, um, but uh, looking forward to that. Okay. Um, Synapse position database meeting we've got on for tomorrow. Um, you see the link there to the um, meeting for that. Um, we've um, this will be a good opportunity to get together with with uh, Stephen Cook. I think it was in this last sprint that we got together. I don't remember. Anyway, we got a new version of the Synapse data. The original Synapse data was a snapshot of this database. It didn't um, <coughs> it didn't have enough data to really parse out. Um, a complete uh, description of a synapse position. So we went back to Stephen Cook and asked him to, um, to re-export, uh, which he did, and we'll now be uh, talking about that uh, in a meeting scheduled for oh, the weekend, actually. So uh, actually, yeah, it's not, it's not tomorrow, it's the weekend. So scheduled for the weekend. Not bad. Okay. 
but that is anyway scheduled. Um, and anyone's welcome to join scheduled for the weekend. Okay. Um, and that basic project, again, is to take an existing database that has positions of synapses for the C. elegans and convert them into the NeuroML connectome uh, that we've been working on. And that's one of the epics on the release there uh, that I, uh, on the roadmap, that is, um, that is the epic one. <laughs> I want to be able to mark uh, synapses and have them integrated into the model. Okay. Um, so not a lot to report on those, except uh, progress is on its way. Okay. Uh, sorry, just to mention that, that I don't think I'll be able to make that um, meeting at the weekend, but um, I would be. I am still interested in that, and uh, uh, if it's easier to get it out of a spreadsheet into NeuroML than the database, then I'm definitely happy to be CC'd on anything, and hopefully I'll have some, some time in the next few weeks to keep an eye on that. Okay, cool. Yeah, Sergey, who isn't here, had has a start on a, on the Python code to actually convert into into NeuroML, but needed the database to be more fleshed out before we can forward. But yeah, so I think um, we'll keep you posted. Uh, and um, I'm trying to think of what the actual point to reach out again is. I think once we're producing some sample NeuroML, I think it will be the point to get back to you hmm. and kind yep. of uh, kind of touch base on it. But thank you, thank you for uh, for continuing to stay in the loop on that. Okay, so a lot on um, uh, on the simulation engine now, turning our attentions to those. Um, so uh, last time we heard improvements to the SBH algorithm to handle elastic matter as well as liquid, and that Andre had been working in Visual Studio for debugging purposes. Andre, Andre, what's new there? Okay, I can tell that... Um, during the last uh, two weeks, well, uh, I spent um, a majority of time um, in implementing uh, PCI SPH. Well, and uh, I can say that about 95% uh, of this work is done. Um, the code is completely written but it ca contains some small uh, bugs, uh, maybe one, <laughs> at least one bug left, but I can't um, make it work uh, stable. Uh, sometimes particles are lost somewhere, go out of screen, mm. but not physically, they just disappear by some unknown reason. Um, but all the rest uh, is fine. Well, also, uh, I work um, with uh, Eugene Zen, who decided to implement uh, surface tension to SPH and PCI SPH in future. Uh, he showed me his work, and he already implemented a detection of uh, particles which correspond to surface and near surface uh, area. Uh, so the particles which um, on which uh, surface tension forces uh, act. Mm, so, about half of this work uh, is also uh, done by him, um, and when forces will be calculated, uh, it will also work, and the liquid um, will not be just um, uh, distributed uniformly uh, during all um, horizontal surface, but will form uh, some mm, spherical or some local, like water drop, uh, which lives on the surface, uh, it will be uh, more realistic. Um, so, uh, I was planning to do elastic matter, but somehow mm, we uh, changed these tasks uh, with Sergei. Uh, so he took um, elastic matter, and I was um, doing PCI SPH. Um, Sergey, uh, during the next two weeks, uh, will be on uh, summer school of young programmers, uh, which uh, is taking place in Russia uh, every year. Um, his role is a teacher of group of students. Uh, 
So he will, uh, he as many other specialists will teach him, uh, teach people, uh, students um, to some uh, programming skills, uh, solving some tasks. Uh, very interesting programming. So he, it will be, um, he, he will have not um, much time during the next two weeks. Um, maybe uh, that's why he's uh, not here today. Um, there, there are, um, there's no good access to internet at that place, as far as I know. Here is uh, our group news. Could I ask uh, what version of uh, Visual Studio are you using? Uh, what version of Visual Studio I use? Yeah. Uh, 2008. Okay, because oh, I... Uh, okay. Uh, because only this uh, version supports um, OpenCL compiler uh, and debugger f from Intel. Okay. Okay, because I think I tried both the SPH project and the C Cyber Elegance uh, projects on Visual Studio, the free edition. Um, and I think that, uh, I definitely got the Cyber Elegance working, but not uh, SPH. So uh, if I try again sometime, it should be more compatible with Visual Studio 2008. So I just know that uh, 2008, it, uh, Service Park 1, mm -hmm. uh, but without it also, as well, it runs and uh, no problems. Okay, I'll try again. M maybe, maybe some additional issues. I don't know uh, some specificity of, of the system. Maybe you can contact and try to, if... Um, you have some problem during compilation or running or something else, uh, you can send me these messages and I can yeah. try to find out yeah, what's going on. I just spent about half an hour, an hour looking at it and uh, one of the projects worked, which was great. I would um, be glad to help. Yeah, um, but uh, I also looked briefly at recompiling it for creating a make file for Linux and there is some uh, Windows specific stuff there so I didn't go too far but uh, I'm sure it's possible to actually take out the, it's mainly the graphical elements, so I'm sure it's possible to take those out, but I just didn't have time to look into that any further. That's awesome. Um, so was there anything about that build process, any gotchas that you learned along the way, or any um, guide um, uh, that you would it, add to what's there currently? It, it, um, it seemed to want to update the Visual Studio project version. So um, I'm not very familiar with Visual Studio, so I just tried opening various different files. One of them seemed to be the uh, project file, and it requested to update that. It seemed to update, and it ran the Cyber Elegance project. So after that, uh, I wasn't sure whether it was um, the correct, an earlier version it had been saved in or what, but uh, if I try again, then I'll make notes on which um, version I used and uh, whether it needed an update. Okay, cool. Yeah, and if you do <coughs> you have issues with the build, um, now that, um, sorry, sort of coming back to the mailing list uh, idea, maybe by like emailing Andre and see the short list, because right now I think there's a lot of people who will run into this same barrier of trying to build this stuff and then not, you know, not being able to. So any yeah. uh, experiences that people log on building stuff, I think, on the mailing list will only help uh, everybody. So. Okay. Um, so, Andre, I also wanted to ask you, um, these, so the, the algorithm for liquid and the algorithm for elastic are in the same family, but technically different, right? So, um, is it now that they're implemented so that Good. they can all work together, so that we can have um, Jello floating in water, kind of thing, or at least Jello interfacing with water, probably not floating. Um, every time we um, are implementing uh, water or elastic matter, uh, we keep it in mind, and there is uh, absolutely no other way 
uh, they should work together. Absolutely. A hundred percent. No ideas to develop them separately, uh, just because uh, I understand that uh, we need it. Um, so when you say you implement yeah. the ISPH, you, you put um, it into the same code base that uh, the other SPH is, is in, is that right? I guess um, there is only one limitation. Um, uh, Elastic Matter is more um, a rigid system than liquid, and it requires a uh, smaller time step, up to 10 times smaller. Uh, so, of course, we can uh, do it, uh, but uh, liquid will be um, calculated uh, because of this more slowly than it's possible uh, from system requirements. But I will think about how to make it more optimal. Got it. Cool. OK. Uh, so that's great. And and uh, so if, if this code um, gets to a point where um, you're happy with being comfortable with it, um, let's definitely check it in so that you can have a look. Um, what's it, so your next step for the next next time is basically to um, eliminate the bugs. Is that uh, that what's next? Yes, I want to run uh, to, to make uh, CSPH finally uh, run uh, successfully. I was trying to finish it uh, for the day, but unfortunately, okay. uh, not completely. Cool. Okay. Well. Um, finally, um, with Sergey's help, uh, I can normally use uh, GitHub and all its features. So um, I will try to regularly uh, update uh, source code. And um, this new uh, system uh, about which uh, <coughs> I have told, um, which unites all the services and news. I have to get uh, uh, how it's called. Yeah, so when I will get, uh, get CISPH working, <laughs> uh, you will know about it immediately. Awesome. Great. That's terrific. All right. Um, we go on to Mateo. Hi. Ah. Can you hear me? It, like I was clicking to unmute the microphone, and at the time, like five people <laughs> logged out from Skype, and there was a banner just right on top of that button, and couldn't click on it. <laughs> so, so uh, update. Uh, well, what I spent mm, mm, uh, just, uh, uh, we had a meeting uh, with uh, Gleb, uh, Joe, and Sergey middle last week about uh, basically the porting of the SPH to the simulation engine. So the, um, that is proceeding, uh, and it's proceeding at the moment mostly because of a contribution from uh, Sergey and uh, Gleb. Uh, Giovanni is on pause on that because of the uh, Tomcat um, uh, WebSocket support uh, not yet available on Virgo. And, uh, and and is set, setting up other things that he will say later, uh, but basically, uh, I, so I will speak for Sergey since he's not here. Um, uh, what he did uh, uh, in in that area, he, he added the uh, support for rotating camera and zoom it. Now uh, I could probably even show that uh, right now on my machine. Uh, I will try. I will bring it up uh, eventually, um, and um, so uh, that is that is one thing. And the other thing that Sergey is going to work on uh, next uh, it is to uh, basically add some uh, buttons on the interface so that you can move the camera in the same <coughs> way that you can do on the warm browser. And uh, eventually, uh, he will uh, also add a way to display metadata. Uh, close to the particle, so so that you will be able to do something like selecting one particle, for instance, and seeing that specific particle highlighted, moving inside the ball with some specific information related 
to the particle, like its position or its speed, or whatever. So uh, that is uh, the update from Sergey that is not here. Um, Gleb will speak for himself, but basically uh, we are uh, we are converging in order to uh, streaming the model from SPH and uh, converting this to a JSON representation that. Uh, Gleb will also work on and uh, get it to, to be displayed. Um, so there, there was that uh, meeting. That it, it's like it's going on every every week now, and it's very productive, helping moving this area forward. The um, uh, the one thing I spend uh, most of uh, these days doing is to um, basically make the simulation engine independent. And then running a uh, standalone uh, outside of uh, from Eclipse, I was uh, uh, engaged by your email, Stephen, on the public mailing list, and um, so we, we won't mm, having a technical meeting right now. But I managed to get that to work. I found, uh, but and um, and the last change I had to make uh, it, it is a weird one, so. Basically, what I have at the moment is all the jars and the WAR files are generated from Maven. I don't have Maven installed uh, externally, as you do with uh, the external tools. So I just have Maven integrated from Eclipse. So, what, but what should happen under the hood is exactly the same because I go and do run Maven install for all the bundles and a jar and a war file is generated and put in the target folder, which is the same thing that is happening to you. So in this case, Eclipse has no influence whatsoever. It's just a tool I'm using to do the Maven install. Okay, and uh, dropping these jars as they are in the target folder, in the pickup folder, works. The one thing that I had to do and I found that out of a chance. It, it, there was, was like no reason that I even had to try it. But basically the name of the of the bundle for the sample simulation, usually when you go in the Eclipse environment, it, it has one name, which is just uh, org.openwormsimulationengine.sampleSimulation. You drop that and it works. Now, when you generate the jar from Maven, the name that comes out is different. And I'm 100% sure that it can be even configured. But it doesn't make sense because if you leave the name that Maven gives to it, which is a sample simulation zero dot zero uh, dash uh, snapshot, if you leave the name as is, uh, you go to the page. It doesn't give a 404. You see the interface, but you hit start simulation. It doesn't work. You get the error saying start the simulation. I, I don't know why I tried, but I tried. I renamed the file to the other name that Eclipse gives it, and it works. So beside this naming thing that we'll be figuring out, now the jar is generated for Maven are for me. So uh, I'm very eager, and I uh, those are the um, I'm very eager to see if they will work for any of you who is willing to try. Stephen, I sent them to you, and now I sent them to Joe as well, and I saw the email from Mike, and I will send them to Mike as well. Of course, uh, once we are happy with this, we can even package them and put them up for download in the, both the official website and the Google code. Of course, we can do that. I just want, before doing that and giving it to the general public, I want to make 100% sure that they work for all of us at the very least. Okay. And the next thing that we can do once that is complete is that we can even, uh, if we really want to, we can even package the whole Virgo server so that people don't have to put them in the pickup folder. People won't have, because it's very unlikely that somebody has Virgo anyway, so that they will just get one file, which is the unzip. That is Virgo, which contains the current release of the simulation engine. And uh, it's not a big deal because much. Oh. You dropped that? At the moment, mm. but it's a start, okay? So they will take that. They will start up. The Was I gone for a second? Yeah. 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 Okay. So, so that people will, will take this. Sorry, Joe, what did you say? I, it's I a chunk, but it still made sense. 
Oh, okay. Uh, I, I was probably reiterating on the chunk that uh, I missed, <laughs> that you missed, it was not relevant. <laughs> Uh, so that basically people will unzip this, uh, just do a startup of the viewer server, point their browser to the address, and that will just work. And that will show up both the front end and the simulation engine, uh, neuronal simulation. So that is definitely some something that is at reach at the moment. So. And we can even uh, we can even do something mm, more clever than that. We could have uh, an app script or something like that that downloads Virgo, installs the bundle, so that instead of having to download something which would be probably something like a couple of hundred megs, they could just download something which is five megs, which would be even better, and then run a script that installs and downloads everything. Uh, the, like all of these things are things that are possible, but are becoming possible now since we fully have a transition to Maven. We have a finally Java CL, uh, and things are starting to get together. So I, I will keep to work on on this because I, I, I wanted to I wanted to work, and the, and then the other thing that I will be doing for the SPH side is uh, converting the SPH model uh, as as it comes out of the SPH simulation into the JSON representation that uh, uh, Gleb will be investigating. So as soon as myself and Gleb will sync up and he will tell me what I have to pr produce, I will produce it. That is kind of the, the idea there, but I uh, will find out more later when Gleb will speak. And yeah, just to reiterate the big picture here as well, sort of motivated by the newfound attention, um, you know, is to make sure that people can come and get a download of what we're doing with the simulation engine right now um, and take it away and play with it. Um, and so thank you very much, Matteo, for all your efforts here in the last basically 24 hours of hacking on this. I haven't yet had a chance to try the, the bundles, but I will uh, when I get uh, a little bit later here today. So, uh, and and the, other thi the other thing, sorry, Stephen, that uh, uh, I just remembered that I want to do, which will be even better than getting them to download anything, which doesn't mean that we won't do that. We will do that. We will give them a bundle or even better a script that they can just run and install everything on their machine. But what I want to do now, since all of this is working, is to put an Amazon instance up and running that we give an address. People just go there. They don't have to install anything. And they will see the latest of both the front end and the neuronal simulation. So there would be nothing to install. They will, uh, just to use it, and I don't know yet how it will work. It might not be that uh, that easy. We might have to uh, join what you're saying in terms of many people try to use it at the same time. Uh, uh, we might have to put a queue or something like that, but we can figure that out. I think. Oops, Mike. Hey, you've got you've got a loud keyboard. If you mute my internet plugin, I'll be uh, be good. Sorry. Thank you. Um, anyway, okay. So awesome. Uh, so I think uh, covered basically all the stuff that you're doing. You covered Sergey's thing. Did you get that rotation camera thing working, Mateo? To share? Uh, fuck. Unmuting is becoming so difficult. Uh, I, I'll bring it up now. I I, I cannot. Uh, I'm not able to speak and and do it at the same time. It's a limit I have. So <laughs> that's why I decided to do it later, and now that I shut up, I will do it, and we'll bring it up. Okay, so. let's let's go to Joe then while you're while you're bringing that up, if uh, if that's all you've got for now. But that's awesome stuff. Okay, so it's my turn. Yes, please, sir. Yeah. So general areas that I've been working around um, over the last month or so is again web sockets and refactoring of the SPH stuff that. Uh, Sergey originally ported from the C++ version into Java and to the simulation engine. So the refactoring is finished. Um, it was like pretty much finished the last time we talked. Since then, very, very small changes. Uh, WebSockets, again, we're, we're still waiting for the next version of Virgo, and there are some examples uh, in Dropbox uh, built on a Tomcat server. So I, I didn't make sense to check them into GitHub because it's just like it's a sample with the 
it's a it's a Eclipse project with a few examples. So I just dropped it into Dropbox. There's a link. There's a path on the thing on the document. Um, and then pretty much I spent a lot of time. So basically one thing we are doing with Gleb is Gleb's helping out with that as well, testing the new basically the new environment with the latest version of June or the latest version of Virgo and stuff. So there was, I don't know that Matteo touched on that, so I'll, I'm going to cover it. Um, uh, basically, moving everything to Juno and the latest version of Virgo is something that we are doing, and Matteo started that, and he packaged, uh, it, let's say, let's call it an open, warm Eclipse distribution, and he did it for Mac OS um, 64. So my task, one of my tasks was to test that out so that we can put it up somewhere in an Amazon bucket or something for, for people to download it directly. And Gleb did the same on Ubuntu. So for example, Mike was trying to, to install the environment a few weeks ago. So now if Gleb's version is uploaded, um, Mike would be able to just download that version of Eclipse rather than having to install all the plugins himself. And, and that's just an example of how it facilitates things. So, yeah, what I'm doing, I'm basically testing the Mac OS 64 installation, and uh, most of it went smoothly, but then I ran into some weird issues at runtime. So, Gleb was working on Ubuntu. We, we was facing some challenges, but we figured it out. Uh, I'm working on Mac OS, but a different version of the OS compared to Matteo, and I, I ran into some issues. I basically spent the last three days maybe eight hours over three days just trying to troubleshoot that and I'm currently in the process of, of doing that. So as soon as I do that, then basically our open warm Eclipse distribution for Juno for Mac OS will be uploaded so that people can download it. And I guess same thing for the Ubuntu version when, when we feel that it's it's a, a twist state that people can just download it and get it to work. So that's very much most of my time. I spent a lot of time on that, but I have nothing to show in terms of results because I'm still in the process of troubleshooting that. And then some other work that I did, I did some, I clean up and organizing tasks on the Scrum Do um, list of epics. I, I like to keep, keep it tidy and I don't mind. So I kind of uh, volunteered for looking after that, keeping it in the stuff that we are doing and so forth. So that's pretty much everything that I can think of. Oh, one thing also that Matteo didn't cover about Sergey is that uh, Sergey was, uh, we agreed, the last meeting we did, uh, we glad Matteo and Sergey and me, uh, so Sergey was going to upgrade to the new environment, Eclipse Juno, under Windows. And then it's gonna package his Eclipse distribution, the same same as Matteo did, same as Gleb uh, will do, uh, at least uh, according to the last time we spoke. Uh, so we're gonna have a Mac OS, Ubuntu, and Windows distribution for Eclipse that people can download and without having to do it manually themselves, downloading all the plugins and so forth. So I think that it's that it's time well spent. Obviously, it's gonna be like. The first time there's gonna be time to figure it out is we spent a lot of time. Gleb, Gleb got it right, like 100 uh, percent, and then there was an undocumented step that, I mean, this this kind of process is serves the purpose of uncovering this undocumented, and it was a very small thing, a flag in some obscure file, but now it's in the document. But I mean, once we do it once, then we upload this. Eclipse distribution for the different OSs and people will just be able to get that and work straight away. And, and hopefully if we have a Virgo one, I mean, Virgo in theory should be okay. But uh, I mean, the, the, the goal is to get people up and running. And this is about the development environment. It's not about a demo. So this is about getting a development environment ready for people to use without having to figure out, oh, I need Maven, I need this, I need that, I need the plugin for Git, I need this and that, so. 
that's pretty much most of my effort trying to test out that uh, Juno distribution for OS X, and uh, I'm still doing it, and everything just as I said. So that's that's everything from me. So would you recommend people wait to until that's available for the various different OSs, or yeah, yeah, yeah. I would I would recommend that. I mean, we're in the process. We're very close. At least I, I think I am uh, quite close to that particular version. Sergey, I know that it started, but I don't know that it finished. So when Sergey finishes, is we're gonna upload the um, basically a Windows distribution of the development environment. And um, same thing. I don't know. I'll, I'll leave Gleb talk about that because he was working, he, he is he's the one who got it running on Ubuntu. Uh, so we're basically going to have one for each environment, which is good. Yeah, that'd be great. Yeah. So if Patrick, for example, if you want to, if you are on Ubuntu or, or Windows, you can just download whatever we uploaded to the bucket, and you're basically hit the ground running in theory. In practice, there's always going to be trouble, but <laughs> yeah, hopefully less. Yeah, no, um, no, it, it, it's great. I mean, I, I was just downloading um, the version of uh, Eclipse there and a long list of uh, plugins for it. So, yeah. I mean, if there is a kind of custom version, then that would be yeah. great. And I like the idea of having an open world branded Eclipse distribution as well as a, as a nice thing to add for the project. I think Mattel is showing that stuff there. Uh, can you hear me? Sorry. Uh, yep. it, took, it took a while, and but just, it's not because of this. It's because my computer was literally crying, uh, crawling with 100 windows open. Right. <laughs> so I, I, no, <laughs> both crying and crawling, which I was trying to say. <laughs> literally crying. Anyway, the, <laughs> so this is it. And um, it, 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 the, the, I'm also showing some work that Gleb did on it, some cleaning up. So this before was some lines uh, emulating a parallel pipit, and now it is actually one. <laughs> and uh, so starting the particles means that now you can do that. So you can zoom in, and so it's slow, but. The frame rate is yeah. slow, but I think they're moving. They're moving on your screen. The particles are moving yeah. randomly. Oh yes, uh, probably you don't see them moving uh, there. I will okay, try yeah. to. Yeah, 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 I sort of see it. Yeah. Nice. Good start. Good start. Nice. And this is pre -stream This is pre-streaming, right? This is that's all local motion that's happening in the yeah, in the browser. Yeah, yeah, this is all. This is all JavaScript. There is no streaming yet, and we cannot have it until uh, uh, Virgo decides to um, basically use the. It's not the l last version of Tomcat because now there is even a newer one. But so it's like uh, uh, they are going the uh, the version 3.5.0. Uh, it's on a release uh, cycle for Virgo. So it means uh, at the moment is a milestone, but they already have a candidate release for the trees five zero. Now, once that will be released, the next one, the three five one, is the version that they said will have WebSocket support. So once this one is released, the next one will be a, mi a downloadable milestone. And once that will happen, I think we'll be the first one to jump on board. And at that stage, we'll be having the streaming. All right, well, creeping ever closer. This is awesome stuff. Um, this is great. Um, so, and uh, so, Joe, thanks also very much for the for the update on that. Um, a lot of this stuff is really getting us um, farther down the path of, of an actual release. Um, uh, we really, I mean, we've released in the past, but I think that when I say actual release, I mean releases that are easily consumable. Um, all that work, uh, although not super sexy, is really, really important. Um, so um, it's really awesome stuff. Uh, maybe we should turn it over to Gleb, uh, whom uh, we've now been, uh, we have, we've had Matteo and Giovanni both referring to, um, who has come onto the project here recently and uh, has added a lot in a short amount of time. Um, so uh, Gleb, do you have anything to, to, uh, to add to uh, what's already been said? Uh, hey, guys. Um, I guess not much to add. I've just been playing with different things. Um, at least on the cloud. 
right-hand side of things. So I've been playing with uh, just setting up kind of WebSockets interface just from the client side. So um, maybe I'll get that code in, and as soon as we have some sort of backend that can actually provide the WebSocket connection, then it might just work. It probably won't, but uh, at least we'll have the interface there. Um, I'm looking into the JSON representation, so then we have um, the data representation that will come from the back end. So the big vision is we'll have a server doing all sorts of simulation, and uh, we'll have a front end uh, showing stuff that's going on. Um, and I'll, as I mentioned in the chat, I'll upload, at least in my Dropbox for now, um, the package copy of Eclipse Juno and send out a public link. And once some people have tried that out and got it to work, and we're um, happy with Eclipse Juno, then we'll get that and the OSX version up and maybe some better getting started start instructions. We also had an email going around um, with Steve and a few other people about just getting more getting started um, type stuff up and just reducing the friction of getting people involved. So um, I guess there's all those kinds of things uh, we, we can do. There's all sorts of scripts and stuff we can write, but we probably want to also make sure we have an elegant getting started solution so that it makes sense to people coming on. Um, yeah, that's about it. Awesome. Um, thanks again, Gleb, for, for jumping on and, uh, and really diving in. Really awesome. And uh, hopefully, um, with your efforts, uh, it'll be even easier for others to, to jump in. Um, so. Oh, there, there is one more thing. I guess we should chat maybe offline about what we want to do moving forward with the CatMade integration. Yeah. Well, so that's actually, um, actually, that's the next topic. So, yeah. yeah. Um, so just real briefly, so I um, haven't had a chance to chat with Stephen Coco as the data provider, uh, but that's what the meeting um, the, on the weekend is. If you're, I don't know if you're interested in, in joining for that uh, conversation, if that's something that you have time for, but um, he been away, and so now we're, we're getting a chance to chat. So on that discussion, um, that's the first time we'll actually say, okay, well, really, what's the data set that we're pointing people to? Um, and then see if we can take um, what you did there to get that uh, instance up um, and actually put it up combined with, with the data set that he's got, um, and then play with it, and then if it looks like it's um, going to be usable for uh, the purpose of inviting people to um, mark it up, then we'll, we'll start the process of like writing up some instructions and, um, and, and doing that whole process. That's kind of where I'm thinking about it right now. Um, but uh, yeah, and in terms of other, other development, I mean, again, it's sort of up to you if, um, if you want to uh, continue to you know, push anything forward on that. Um, so I know that there's work being done there. I know Stefan is moving forward, CatMade, but um, if maybe if you want to... Are you able to attend that meeting on, on Saturday? Yeah, I can attend that meeting. Yeah, and in terms of moving forward, I mean, I'm, once we kind of have focus about what we're trying to accomplish rather than just kind of pushing code, um, then we can um, decide how to you know, be most efficient with that, especially to make sure that um, we're working on things that are on our um, path. Right. And then right. making uh, complementing any other projects that we need to get that yeah. done. So I think it'll be most obvious when we've taken the instance of CatMade, put Stephen Cook's code on it, and then we've tried to mark up synapses directly um, and, um, and see what the use case looks like. Um, I think that'll make it the most clear specifically for what changes, if any, the CatMade we would most benefit from. I think we've got a good, a good roadmap on that. Cool. All right. Uh, so, Porg, uh, I've got a couple updates from you from before. Um, and I guess I'll <coughs> Mike. Um, and so either of you guys want to want to jump in on, um, on what's going on with the mobile compartmental Python API, not that that's directly part of the project, but I think it's something that we're all excited to have happen. But, um, right, well, with the multi-compartmental API, the um, libneuroml component of that, so getting neuroml and loading a neuroml file into, into memory, um, 
the morphology side of that is all is all done, so that's a difficult part. So I would say it's definitely at a good alpha stage. There's still wor a lot of work to be done done on it in the coming month and a half. But now I'm also working on the pyramidal, which is the idea of that is to actually use the use this libneuroml API to be able to run simulations. So I started work on that this week, and it's going well. I was able to get my first multi-compartmental, very simple, uh, passive simulation. Um, so progress is going pretty well on that. I think it's about, I, I'm at around where I expect it to be six weeks in, so that's pretty good. Um, I'd be pretty interested once um, once I can get the Ubuntu Eclipse um, version downloaded and possibly simulator working on my machine. I'd be very interested at looking at the possibility of getting the simulator API to talk to the open worm simulator because that would be a fantastic way of verifying the result. It would be an excellent way of testing if you could have a open worm simulator object and run run you know run your two simulations one in neuron one in genesis one in open worm simulator and ensure that they give the same result which is obviously what you'd want so i'll uh, i'll wait for gleb's uh, link to come around and i'm really looking forward to looking at the investigating the possibility of doing that i think that would be a really good step forward does anyone have any input on that i've never tried getting pop Python to talk to Java, but I've been reading about it and it looks doable. Does anyone have any experience doing such things? Uh, yeah, uh, I mean, uh, Py sorry, Python and Java do uh, communicate nicely with uh, Jython, so you can actually um, write Python scripts which will um, interface with Java classes. Um, the only problem there is that not all of the uh, core Python uh, libraries are implemented in um, Jython. If you have some which depend on uh, C++ compiled libraries, or library, yeah, libraries, then um, it's more difficult to actually access them from Jython. We'll try. Yeah. That's yeah. What I can say, but um, this could be a, this could potentially be pretty cool because obviously, if if the multi-compartmental simulator API is supporting other simulators, then ma making sure it all works by, by using, making sure the simulator works by t finding out if it simulates the same stuff in neuro easily trying a simulator in neuron and trying it something else would be, and, and you could do things like benchmark its, its, um, its performance and all sorts of things. So that's something yeah. I'm very keen to look at. Yeah, I mean, that's yeah. also... Sorry. No, sorry, sorry, you go ahead. Uh, yeah, no, I mean, I think that's generally... I mean, if the um, uh, simulator engine will load NeuroML, then it's definitely a use case to actually compare it directly to um, Neuron and Genesis and have a maybe an automated test for just uh, comparing the different simulators. Um, as far as Python API is concerned, uh, I mean, you could envisage that there'd be a Pine-like API for the, uh, in an ideal scenario, uh, there'd be a, if there was a local, and this is get, getting it back again to my suggestion about a local version, a local interface to the simulator engine. If that was running on your desktop, you could have a Python API to that, which would, you could interact with that through a Pine-based uh, API for loading in the new ML, uh, running simulations and so on, and getting back results uh, immediately. In an ideal scenario, I mean, I know that the architecture is slightly different, but again, if it is just a jar mm -hmm. which is actually running uh, the simulation, then it should be conceivable in some scenario. So we're quite lucky that these two things are being de developed pretty much at the same time. Um, the multi-compartmental multi simulator, the, probably the top priority right now is to get good support for Neuron, but um, as, as you guys are, are the developers of, of the simulator and we talk, communicate on such a regular basis, I'd be very keen to get the second or third simulator supported being the open worm. Does it have a name, by the way, the open worm simulator? That's pretty much what we're going to That's another point. <laughs> 
But I should I should point out, and I think uh, and I know that uh, Giovanni and I actually had a conversation about this recently too. Um, so right now, right, the OpenWorm simulator um, implements Hodgkin Huxley on GPUs using OpenCL. Um, it's not generically configurable uh, yet. So the, the current demo was showing that you could implement those equations and that it would work and you could go all the way out you know, to the browser with it. Um, but it doesn't have uh, the generic NeuroML support that we want it to have. So I, I want to already manage your expectation there um, that, uh, that that piece isn't there. Now, what, what's really interesting to think about is the degree to which the API and the objects that you're building, the Python objects, could be read in to the engine uh, so to provide the multi-compartmental support and then the connection is not about creating uh, Java objects that do uh, the, 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 the multi-compartmental description but that actually we use Python objects somehow. Um, so um, just want to let you know that uh, we might actually ingest this, uh, this API um, as, a, as a starting implementation. Um, yeah. Yeah, so uh, it's um, it's already at the stage where you can, right now in terms of simulators, you can load a multi-compartmental model in NeuroML. That's you can do that, and in Neuron at least you can get a passive model and inject a current into it. So very boring because there's no active conductances or anything like that. But it's at that stage of so. If one thing I'll try, depending on how hard it is, is once I get this. Um, once I get this Eclipse version, I'm going to have a look at can I do the same thing in um, with the Open Worm Simulator? Because that, that'd be really cool. Yeah. And then my, if we could, yeah. Sorry, just one question: Is uh, the simulator what kind of support for uh, ion channels do you have? Are, can you like uh, simulate arbitrary ion channels? Do you use code generation, or how, how do you do that? So. Um, that's that's actually quite a tricky one. So um, with I am intending to supply like a class which you can have where you can write ion channels inside this API and then use code generation potentially to run simulations. But that's that's going to be pretty hard for Neuron because the code for Neuron to write um, simulations is not very pretty, although Mike Hall has had some progress on this. So that's still kind of open. Um, however, as you guys are still developing the simulator, if we could do that together, it might be very feasible to get uh, to, to use, say, code generation or, or even something else. Yeah, um, we were discussing to something along those lines. I mean, we kind of, uh, Alaric, you were trying to say something? Sorry, I was just going to mention that um, uh, the API uh, will, for the most part, be based on uh, NeuroML version 2. So most of the objects in NeuroML version 2 will have um, descriptions. So if it's a, a simple integrating fire cell or a channel, we'll have descriptions of the dynamics behind those. So you will have an object model for describing the state variables for all of the time derivatives and so on. And all, so all of that will be in lens, as it's been called. Um, and there are APIs at the moment in Java and in Python for LEMS. And there's even a, ja well, Robert Cannon's uh, LEMS interpreter. There is a Java implementation at the moment of that where it can actually simulate uh, all those NeuroML2 objects. Uh, it doesn't know anything about channels or uh, cell models. It just knows the dynamics behind them and can simulate them. So, I mean, in the longer term, it might be possible to actually integrate some of that with uh, the simulation engine and maybe parse the equations, make a more efficient uh, implementation of uh, the model and then run that on the GPUs. So there's, be. there's a lot of open questions, but luckily as these two things are being developed at the same time, um, it's something something we might be able to work on together. Really, until until I have, I've tested the simulator and seen its limitations and its architecture and so on, this, this is the open worm simulator, I'd rather not commit to anything because once I tested it, certain things might complete, become very obvious and certain things might be might turn out to be tricky. So I'd like to have a look at the get the simulator to work and then and then we can definitely talk about getting the multi-compartmental type stuff. 
the current version is a proof of concept, so it just runs uh, Ochin actually with fixed ion channels like sodium and potassium. Yeah. Activation and inactivation. So that's mm -hmm. that's all it does. You can just pass down a bunch of neurons, will run them in parallel. There's no connectivity defined. There's none of that. So it's like a proof of concept to to test the full architecture mm -hmm. stuff from the browser to the GPU and back, mm -hmm. and polling, and like simulating this thing um, in chunks and so and so forth. So it's a proof of concept. Don't expect anything sophisticated because it's nothing like that. No, I'm I'm not expecting anything sophisticated. But um, even with a proof of concept, even yeah. so, this, the multi compartmental simulator itself is right now still at the proof of concept level. But um, if we're developing these things together, yes. they can work. It, it's more likely to work in the future than if we just go on our own path and then try and connect. Yeah, no, I both. agree. And I need uh, so, for example, I did most of the work on that neuronal simulator, but I need help from people who actually know what they're talking about. Meaning, uh, if you're working with me on that, uh, it's easy. Uh, for me to act like we can work together because you know about the neuronal part and I, and I know more about the technology that's behind that yeah. particular simulator. So so far, obviously, Stephen has been able to help a lot. So it's I'm not saying that no one here not. So there's a lot of people here who are able to help, but uh, it's so it's so it's obviously great to have more people who are able to uh, work on on that piece and. In particular, if you're doing that work, it seems like a good match that we like, mm -hmm. work together on that. So vis-a-vis -vis things like, so right now you can only support single compartments, right? Yes. So that's so another extension we were discussing. So some of the future works for that was uh, multi-compartmental, um, extended to arbitrary ion channels, but that's, that, that means like code generation, which... We had a discussion a few, maybe yesterday with Stephen about this. Should we do code generation or should we just say, well, the C. elegans only has this, this, these three kinds of cells that we want to simulate with Hodgkin actually. Why don't we just implement those? No, that's, that's, I don't think that's the way to do it. We, we can, it's, it's kind of a separate discussion. I think, I think there's ways to do it using like Python functors and stuff. I, I, um, so I think it would be possible to do something like write a Python method, which is, you know, the input is voltage and the output is conductance. And then there, there's ways to, that might be the wrong way to do it. Um, using NeuroML is probably a good way to do it. There's all sorts of ways to do it. But yeah. um, I mean, it's a discussion for another time. But stuff like the mathematics of multi-compartmental models and stuff like that, definitely I'd be keen to help on that. Yeah, no, and that's that's what I'm interested about because I don't want to focus about uh, the technology. I want to focus about how we want to do it and then whatever technology we pick, we figure out how, how to do that and that technology or we, we basically, the, the what we need to do might, might like also dictate some of the technology stuff. But yeah, uh, yeah we discuss how, what and 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 then the how comes after. So yeah. yeah. Okay. Maybe um, Mike, do you do you guys have any online meetings for um, this topic um, coming up? The BML. Yes, we have an online meeting once every two weeks. Okay. Um, there is also, yeah. Sorry, there there is also that mailing list. Um, I think it's neuromel python at. Well, I can probably figure it out. Um, but that's where the main discussions about the libneuroml uh, Python implementation take place, and uh, there's a lot of back and forth. And all the meetings, I think, are announced there as well. Um, by the way, uh, there was, uh, I think about two weeks ago, a meeting on libneuroml and the multi-compartmental API in London, which was partially financed uh, from the INCF. Uh, now, that was mainly because uh, Mike is a Google Summer of Code uh, is on a Google Summer of Code project um, sponsored by the INCF, so they were happy to uh, sponsor a few people. I think Andrew, uh, Mike, uh, Mike Holm, Mich Michele Migliore came along. Um, I think maybe in a few weeks, I don't know whether it might be possible in the longer term to have maybe a face-to-face -face meeting with a small group of people who are interested in integrating the multi-compartmental API with some uh, aspects of the simulator engine. It's 
conceivable that the INCF might support something like that if it was publicly announced and open. Uh, so that might be something to consider for the next few weeks or even next few months. Yep. Uh, Definitely sounds like additional conversation is needed. So, um, Matteo and Giovanni, I've added you both to my NeuroML circle, so you'll be aware of meetings on the API in future. Okay. Um, so the meetings have mainly been focused on representing neuronal morphologies in memory, um, which isn't that relevant to what you're doing, but now the meetings should take on much more a tone of simulators, in which case you'd probably be quite interested in that. Anyway, as I say, I'll, I'll get this, I'll, I'll download this Ubuntu uh, version of Eclipse, this, um, this what Gleb is producing, um, have a look at it, and then I'll know more about yeah. what we need to talk yeah, about. I think you support. need um, OpenCL enabled drivers, obviously. Yeah, uh, that's fine. Yeah. Go ahead, Matteo. Uh, no, just to um, briefly reiterate on what you were saying, uh, Stephen, which was uh, a very good point. I think we have an opportunity here, and it's not an opportunity as much because we already have in terms of the neural simulator in uh, the op in open world, just because as uh, they were both saying, Joe and Stephen, that is a proof of concept which doesn't do multi-compartment, uh, multi it doesn't do arbitrary area on channels. Uh, I think we have an opportunity since we are willing to invest time and resources in building such a simulator for open world. And given the knowledge that we have right now inside the group and the will uh, at different levels, both from the engineering effort required, both from the uh, more uh, scientists, I think we can, in within the next month, build a multi-compartmental simulator for the open world regardless of what is there now, because we want to do that. We need that for the Open World project. We want to do that in a way that it uses NeuroML, and we want to have code generation, if possible, so that uh, we do it the right way, and it's not something that we throw away uh, once the C elegance is done. So I think we have an opportunity, because we're a group of people who want to do this, and uh, we'll do it uh, more than because what, what we already have checked in in GitHub. Now, what we have is just something that's that's been there to prove that we, we can work with that particular stack. So we know that. Yeah. Awesome, I love it. I love the passion. Let's let's okay, great. Let's let's figure this out. Let's uh, let's map this out here. Um, for um, I I do want to I do want to just um, if we can just uh, get to the last folks because we only got ten minutes left and I want to keep people with time, um, if that's all right. Um, I, I wanted to just check in with Ford real quick. Um, if you knew if any of the videos from the IMCF meeting had been posted, uh, just because you'd attended and if you'd seen any. I haven't seen any announcement about that or heard anything about it. Um, they may come up on the IMCF website at some point, but uh, I haven't heard anything about it from the meeting itself. Okay. Then um, I wanted to let Alex uh, have a chance to say hi again. Um, because uh, he's he's back um, after doing a lot of work on these and stuff, so um, welcome back. Thanks. Um, do you want to say a little bit? We just met this last week, but did did you just want to say what you were uh, interested to get back into, real quick? Uh, yeah. So basically, I took a look on the data we have. Uh, I wrote a simple Python script uh, to plot. To, to be able to look on the graphs, uh, but basically, uh, I do not completely understand what what is this data. But uh, if you are, if you want, you can uh, take a look on the pictures. It's in a Dropbox folder, so and the, the script is there as well. Nice. So just to provide context, right? So. Um, we got this contribution of muscle cell data, a lot, a lot higher resolution than what uh, we had uh, received from uh, the Jordan Boyle stuff. Um, and Alex um, agreed to, uh, so we, uh, so then Mike uh, opened it up from the Igor format, uh, put it into um, a text format. So Alex has taken that text and has, has uh, plotted it. What did you plot it with, Alex? 
the Python library, I guess it's uh, Matt. Uh, uh, just give me a second. OK. Is this the folder that you're calling temp? Matt, Matt Plotlib. Yeah, exactly. Matt Plotlib, OK. And is this the temp folder? Um, no. Okay. Just a moment. Oh, OK, I see. Script.py and experiment. Some data, and then in each folder for the experiment, there is the EXPs with the, the data and the corresponding ENG. Wow. Okay, I'm just highlighting this now in in uh, in the in the jokey. So it's under right. It's under the folder muscle cell data experiment uh, 0504 200. So this is great. So this will be a good place for us to start when when we meet together with Mike. Um, uh, when we set that meeting up. Um, I can't find this folder in in my Dropbox. I think I no longer have the shared folder. Can can someone send me a link to a, to this public folder in Dropbox? Yes. Um, so if you if you get on if you get on Hajoki right now. Um, sorry. Hajoki, yep. Uh, I just uh, yep. I just replied to it, and that should give you a link directly to it. Um, and uh, actually, here, yeah, I think I can also fix it. Yeah. Okay. 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 So, okay, thank you. let's use that as a starting point for, for this week. So, awesome. Uh, uh, how was that, how was that uh, experience of getting that started? Uh, was it relatively easy? Alex, was it? Uh, how was it to get that plotted? That plot working? Uh, rather easy. Okay. Not too difficult. Okay. Awesome. Great. That's good. So yeah, the point of this is just make sure that we can programmatically work with this data, and then get get ourselves moved back into the model optimization topic. Um, we'll see if uh, if Mike uh, still has bandwidth uh, for that stuff, which is 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 you know related to your thesis stuff anyway. So. But uh, obviously, I'm sure the LibNormal stuff is really exciting to you. OK, great. Uh, then in the last five minutes, I wanted to speak for Balash, who hasn't, um, wasn't able to join us. He might be viewing the stream. I don't know. I also wanted to kind of point out, I just saw that uh, we reached a peak of six simultaneous viewers in the stream uh, about uh, five minutes ago. So uh, if you're watching, uh, check out everything more about it. Um, but anyway, um, so, uh, sent me a first draft of the paper that he's been working on. Uh, he set a deadline for for July, and I got it. Uh, I got got it on July fourth, and I sent him back an email saying, um, "Okay, how how shall we collaborate on this?" Uh, asking him a few questions about. Uh, so he had made it in a LaTeX format, and asking him basically how we should uh, how the group can have a look at it, um, and and uh, do it in a way that where we can all. Where as you were all reading it, um, you know we can be commenting, and those comments can actually come back to him. Um, he's been away without uh, internet access. I think it's all tomorrow. A lot, I guess a lot's happening tomorrow. Um, so um, so he hasn't responded yet. But um, but as a first pass, it looks very good. Um, I, I don't I hadn't wanted to share it with everyone yet until he makes it clear how he wants to proceed with the collaboration stuff on that. But um, I'm sure when he gets back to me, uh, it'll be it'll be rather obvious. Um, but anyway, he's done a nice job of, of kind of summarizing things. So I'm looking forward to sharing that with all of you uh, very soon. Um, but um, and uh, I think he wasn't able to attend again because he's uh, on on either holiday with his folks, I think. Um, but uh, he's very much involved and engaged and, and wants you all to know that. Um, okay, good. And um, yes, and Tim also sent me a note just before this saying that he wasn't going to be able to make it. He had a crazy week. Um, but uh, but that he'd have more for us, uh, you know, when he gets back. So, uh, so thank you, Tim. Okay, great. And now we've got three minutes to the end. Um, did uh, I saw some activity on the chat? Uh, did anyone want to say any final words here before we break on that stuff? Um, oh yes. Okay, right. So it looks like Gleb. Uh, Gleb has a link up now for 
the Juno package. Does everybody see that? Yes. Yeah. Okay. 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 Good. So, um, great. Any final any final comments? Anybody? Um, in about two weeks or so, uh, I'm at the uh, CNS Computational Neuroscience Meeting in Atlanta, uh, and I'll be presenting there about the open source brain uh, repository that we've been working on. I think I might have mailed around about that before, uh, which is basically an uh, open source collabor collaboration repository for neuronal models, which is including or has links to the Open Worm project. So I'm um, just introducing the um, uh, project in general, the open source brain project in general, but I will be using um, uh, Open Worm as an example an exemplar of um, how people can actually collaborate on these. So um, just let people know I'll be promoting it there and hopefully get a few more hits from that. That's cool. How long of an intro is that? It's only 20 minutes, so that should be 15 minute plus um, five minutes questions. But I have about 30 slides already, so um, it might have to uh, be cut down a bit. But I'm hoping to, uh, well, to introduce the Open One project very briefly, but show uh, maybe some running simulations in Neuron, because I think a lot of people there will be fami familiar with that simulate simulator. So if I can actually show the full morphology and the full uh, an active simulation in Neuron, then I'll try to get a video of that together and show people there and hopefully promote the project a bit. Awesome. Great stuff. Any other closing comments? OK. Awesome. Thanks, everybody, for joining. Um, we will uh, do this again in two weeks. Um, hope you can all make it. And, um, and uh, yeah, uh, again, uh, really excited about where all this is going to go. And um, uh, looking forward to our next Hacker News posting uh, soon. <laughs> so um, thanks, everybody, and have a great, uh, great couple weeks. OK. Thanks. Thanks, everyone. Bye-bye. Thanks. Bye. Bye-bye.